Hello students, in the previous video we were discussing about the external communication interfaces. A uh, few of the examples uh, we discussed and the fourth example is infrared. An interface where communication is achieved by transmission of infrared radiation. So infrared communication technique uses the infrared waves of electromagnetic spectrum for transmitting the data. So it's a half du duplex and it is a serial communication where uh, it uses a, it works on the principle of line of sight based uh, technology. Example uh, are the remote control of TV, VCD player and etc. It supports a point to point and point to multi point communication and it has a range from 10 cm to 1 meter. It supports a data rate of uh, 9600 bits per second to six, uh, 16 megabits per second. And depending upon the speed of this uh, data transmission, it is divided into five uh, classification. The first one, serial IR, it supports the data rates from 9600 BPS to 115.2 kilobits per second. In the same way, it is divided for the different data rates for medium, fast, very fast and ultra fast IR. It supports up to 100 megabits per second. So this communication involves a transmitter unit for transmitting and uh, a receiver for receiving the data. So transmitting unit we have the infrared LED as an IR source and for receiving we have the photodiode as a receiver. So if both transmitter and receiver if it is present in each device so that means it is responsible for bidirectional data transfer and that device we will call it as a trans receiver. So it is most popular for the file exchange uh, and the data transfers and it is most popularly was using in the mobile phones before the Bluetooth existence. So next moving on to the Bluetooth. So Bluetooth is a low cost, low power, short range uh, technology proposed by Ericsson in uh, 1994. It operates at uh, 2.4 gigahertz. And works on the principle uh, works on the technology of uh, frequency hopping spread spectrum it supports a data rate up to 1 megabits per second and uh, the distance up to 330 feet of uh, for the communication and this also supports as infrared that is uh, point to point and point to multi point and it follows the the point to point follows the master slave re relationship so either uh, it acts as a master or a slave so when a network is formed with one Bluetooth device as a master and more uh, more than one device as slaves, that network will call it as a Pico net. And uh, this is a, a good choice for the short range communication in the embedded devices. So it is, as we all know, it is used in our cell phones and for transferring the files, pictures, media files, etc. So the specifications for the Bluetooth communication is defined and licensed by the standard body that is Bluetooth Special Interest Group SIG. So next example is a Wi-Fi. So Wi-Fi wi is a technology uh, where uh, it uses the sub, uh, standard that is IEEE 802.11. It is based on the internet protocol communication. The IP address, so it will be a unique to each device on the network. The Wi-Fi based communications um, require an inter, uh, imme, intermediate agent called router or access point. So to manage all these communications, the router is responsible for uh, restricting the access to the network or assigning the IP address or uh, how the packet should be that is routing of the data packets to the intended devices on the network. So Wi-Fi enabled devices contain an adapter for uh, transmitting and receiving the data and uh, the hardware part is known as Wi-Fi radio. So it operates at uh, 2.4 giga or uh, 5 gigahertz and the data rates range from 1 megabits per second to 1.73 gigabits per second and uh, the distance is of about 100 to 300 feet. So the diagram shows the typical interfacing of a Wi-Fi network along with the devices. So it uses a, a router, Wi-Fi router. If you want to know more about the working of this Wi-Fi router, you can go through this link. Next is a Zigbee. Zigbee is a low-power, low-cost uh, 
device where uh, uh, the Zigbee is based on the IEEE 802.1154206 standard. Uh, so the standard. So it is mostly ta uh, targeted for the low power and low, low data rate. Uh, Zigbee specification support a robust mesh network containing multiple nodes and um, uh, it works on the unlicensed bands of radio spectrum at 2.400 to 2.484 gigahertz and likewise and uh, Zigbee supports an operating distance of about 100 meters and the data rate up to uh, 20 to 250 kilobits per second. In the Zigbee terminology, each Zigbee device falls under any one of the categories. So there are uh, Zigbee coordinator that is uh, ZC, Zigbee rotor, Zigbee end device. So Zigbee coordinator is acts as a root of the Zigbee network. Uh, Zigbee coordinator is, is responsible for initiating the Zigbee network and it has the cap capability to store information about the network. So Zigbee router uh, is responsible for passing information from device to another device or to another uh, Zigbee router. So whereas the Zigbee end device uh, contains, this end device contains a Zigbee functionality for data communication. It cannot uh, talk only with uh, Zigbee coordinator and uh, or uh, Zigbee router and uh, doesn't have the capability to act as a mediator for transferring data from one device to another. The diagram shows here how these are all uh, arranged in a Zigbee network that is Z, ZC, ZR and ZED. So the applications goes like this. It is used in home control applications, health applications, telecom applications and uh, it's used as a smoke detectors and the list goes on. So you can refer to these applications. The last uh, example is a GPRS. So it is a communication technique for uh, transferring the data over mobile communication network like GSM. So data is sent as packets and the transmitting device splits the data into several uh, packets. The receiving data reconstruct back that those packets. So maximum data, uh, the maximum uh, transfer rate is 171.2 kilobits per second. So this uh, GPRS communication, the radio channel is uh, concurrently shared between the several users instead of dedicating that single channel to a cell phone user. It, it has been shared between several users. The GPRS communication divides the channel into eight time slots and transmits the data over available channel. GPRS is mainly used by mobile uh, enabled embedded devices for data communication. To, uh, to accomplish this communication, the carrier network also should have support the GPRS uh, communication. So, um, so in this uh, GPRS, uh, that is, it's an old technology and it is being replaced by new generation cellular data communication techniques like 3G, 4G, HSDPA, LTE, which offers higher uh, bandwidths for communication. So these are all the examples for uh, the external communication interfaces. Thank you.